Today's video sponsor is Surfshark. Good morning and welcome to the TWA Hotel at New York's JFK Airport. Look at that. I'm going to give you a spoiler of this review right at the start. The TWA Hotel is a much better museum than it is an airport hotel. I'll come on to its various shortcomings later, but for now let's marvel at this magnificent cathedral of aviation. Designed by Eero Saarinen in 1962 as the original TWA terminal at the beginning of the jet age, this glorious piece of architecture now houses the public areas of the hotel, with the accommodation being in two new towers as seen here. The 1960s theme just oozes out of everything the hotel does in its public spaces. There are even a few period vehicles left parked out front. You can enter the hotel from the JetBlue Terminal, Terminal 5, via a lift. That's fun, but nowhere near as marvellous as going in the main entrance. Wow! This building, the Head House, which retains most of its original features, utterly encapsulates the age where confidence was returning to the US and the West in the post-war period, and the world was getting progressively smaller with the advent of the jet age. Here, there's glamour to spare. It's rather like standing in a giant Thunderbirds TV set. I'm half expecting to find a boarding card for the fire flash to London in my hand. Check-in is, of course, at the old check-in counters. Oddly, you're expected to check yourself in via a kiosk, and most of the front of the building is given up to not one, but two food and drink outlets. The Blade Helicopter Taxi Service to Manhattan also has a desk here. There's also a Twister Room. Today I learned this game was invented in 1966. The rest of the public area is given up to a sunken cocktail bar and a splendid collection of former TWA uniforms from the airline's inception to its sad end in 2001 when it merged with American Airlines. The exhibition is by the old Ambassadors Club, TWA's VIP and business class lounge and is well worth checking out. On the mezzanine is the Paris Café and the Lisbon Lounge Bar. These aren't run by the hotel and I'll cover my dinner experience later on. Honestly, just being in this building is an uplifting experience. It's like a polished relic and transported me so vividly back in time like no other building I can recall. There are even old rotary phones on the wall. You can listen to a special message from TWA, but instead, here's a message from today's sponsor. Today's video sponsor is Surfshark, an award-winning VPN which you should use to keep you safe on public internet, access some blocked content overseas, and it can also help you find some lower airfares too. In the upcoming example, I'm searching using Kayak on my phone with Surfshark turned off. Let's look at London to Sydney, a really popular route. £653 return is the cheapest fare for these dates. 
Now Surfshark can spoof your location perfectly legally and because airline fares vary by country of sale, you can sometimes find cheaper ones. Turn on the VPN and select your location as a low-income country and search again. And here we've made a saving of £19 as an Air China fare has become available. Get Surfshark by going to surfshark.deals forward slash winginit for 83% off and a month extra for free. I've gone on for long enough about how stunning the main building is, and really, it is well worth a visit. But now, let's go to the newly built accommodation towers. First stop, the pool, which you've probably all seen before. It's worth saying it was November when I visited, and boy was it cold up here. So there were no brave swimmers in the pool, and definitely no al fresco dining happening. But hey, what a view. The only people braving the cold were a handful of aviation enthusiasts. Something I've not seen much of in other reviews is the conferencing area. It's underneath the accommodation towers and it's huge! There are loads of 1960s themed rooms and the decor attempts to echo the jet age theme found in the head house, and quite successfully too. This space must be awesome to hold formal events in, and I love the colour scheme. I'm a big fan. Also, notice the mock hangar doors on the Constellation Ballroom. A nice touch. Talking of constellations, there's one parked out the back. Connie, as she's affectionately called, now hosts the hotel's feature cocktail bar. We'll come back to her a bit later when it's dark. Elsewhere in the hotel is a faithful replica of Howard Hughes, the former owner of TWA's office. A sort of museum room showing what affluent American homes looked like in 1962, and a replica of Eero Saarinen's studio. There are even replica designs located in the files which you're welcome to browse. If you're a literature connoisseur, you'll want to check out the library in the head house. Now, onto the room. It's expensive to stay here. $251 bought this Executive King runway view suite for the night. I'm not really sure why they call it a suite, it's just one room. 
and the room isn't that great to be honest for the price. This supporting pillar took up some floor space, and while the room looks great, this suite is way smaller than most regular airport hotel rooms around JFK. This expensive suite doesn't even come with a coffee machine, and I rather suspect it's because the hotel wants you to visit the public area for a coffee, which of course you'd have to pay extra for. Come on, even a Hampton Inn has coffee. I'm really not a fan of generic brand refill toiletries for the same reasons noted travel blogger Gary Leff isn't. While we're at it, I'll rattle off some other criticisms. The restaurants and bars are all separately operated by different companies, and the hotel can't help you with the reservations, so you have to do it online and it just seems needlessly complex for a hotel. Check-in is too late at 4pm, which is an hour later than most airport hotels and doesn't respect the various needs of international travellers. And all the restaurants, cafes and the cocktail bar definitely need a reservation, even for breakfast. And breakfast starts at 8, which is way too late for an airport hotel. What kind of hotel has a reservation for breakfast? Never come across it before. Also, security. As a non-staying guest, you can just wander around the whole place, even the floors with rooms on, without being challenged. I checked out at 11am and stayed until past 4pm waiting for my flight. There are precious few staff in the public areas, and the experience really seems to be basically a brilliant museum with a three-star hotel stuck onto it. There isn't even a bin in the room. If you eat an apple, you've got to let it rot here on the writing desk. TWA Hotel, please give me a bin. Dinner at the Paris Café was interesting. The surroundings are faultlessly chic and the menu predictably expensive, but the service was so-so and the local interpretation of fish and chips was laughably bad. My dining companion's gnocchi was a little better. Finally, it was on to Connie for a cocktail. The surroundings again were superb and a real aviation enthusiast dream. I even managed to get a wing view. The pictures really speak for themselves. This is a unique setting for a cocktail. In summary, yes, the TWA Hotel is a far better museum of aviation and architecture than it is a hotel. It's an exquisite gem of a place, but next time I'm at JFK, I'll be using the Hampton Inn. Sorry. I definitely don't regret staying though, and I really, really recommend you visit once. It really is an unparalleled experience. However, it is a novelty, and given the steep price and low practicality, it's unlikely to make you want to return. Thanks again to my sponsor Surfshark, without whom you wouldn't be seeing this video. Don't forget to visit surfshark.deals forward slash winginit for 83% off and a month extra for free. Cheers, and I'll see you next time.